It's a two-hour show here in my uh, my home studio. Oh now my you, God, it's crazy. Hear me? Hold on, I'm gonna hear you in a second. Hold on, hold on. Uh, Ellie, Ellie is king. That's oh my God, are. I'm king. <laughs> oh, hey. Guys, hey, look what's going on over here. Look what's going on. Look what's going on. Fedora, Just finish. Guys, if anyone finds a fedora, because I need to hook up with the Ellie look. All right. That's wow. it. Wow. Yeah. I just finished my show. Yeah, Baruch Hashem. Yeah, it was a beautiful. It was a beautiful show. Was, I, I had some technical difficulties in the beginning, but it ended up. Everybody does. If you don't have technical difficulties, like you're not human. I'm telling you. And people are saying that was an amazing show. I came on, by the way, to check it out, and I, I, I it was just a perfect moment. I came on. You were you were singing the most beautiful song um, that you created in like a dark moment. We're gonna talk about it. I want you to talk to us all about that. And how long was the show for? How do you still have energy? <laughs> I don't know. People, people, music, music fuels me. It's the opposite. Music fuels me. It doesn't, it doesn't sap energy. It it's it's like it a gives fire. You energy. It's yes. like nuclear. It's a nuclear energy. It's nuclear. You know why it's nuclear? Nuclear oh, energy God. just grows and it grows and it grows. It doesn't get used. Um, it doesn't get used up. It's just, uh, it's just, it's there. I, and, hope uh, you had, I hope you had a bathroom break or something. You went for like two bathroom? hours. Bathroom? I'm like Pare. Pare. I'm like Pare. No bathroom. Uh, no bathroom. I want to know when is the album coming out? Um, so I'm working on it. I think I'm going to come out with singles to start. I'm working on, I, I played a couple of songs, but over the next couple of months to a year, six months, about three months to six months, it's going to be out. I'm very excited. Cause, cause it's been, it's been, it's been a while. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know what? People ask me, Ellie, why don't you come with more music? I can't write something until my perspective shifts. Continue writing the same things over and over again. You have to 
grow as a person before you can say something different. If you don't have new experiences, what's the point? What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you saying? So you're going to say another thing as an artist, as a singer, you can sing anything you want. Meaning you could sing, uh, sing any song. But when you're trying to write something that's meaningful for you love it. as a person, how can you write until you have the experiences? And it takes time to gain new experiences, to move on, to, to do different things. You know, it takes time. So it take, take me a couple of years. Take, I said, I'll write it out. I love what you're saying. I love what you're saying. Because you can't deliver if it's not from, from the soul. I mean, you could, but you won't penetrate another soul. Right. It has to be genuine. That's what I, that's, and that's why I spend, listen, a lot of people will disagree. And they'll say, but for me, I write from a personal place. They'll say, oh, you can write songs. And it's true. You can, and you can move people. But my personal thing is, you can do both. My personal, the way I work, my brain and heart works. Your heart. You know. It's your heart. It's, it's, yeah. it's more than, than just, it's not a talent. Like, I, I say, like, even like photographers, I do a lot of events. There are photographers that are like, I see a moment like the Zaidi and the, and the, and the eight o'clock, they're talking to each other. And I'm like, capture it. And, and the photographer's like, okay, everybody smile for the camera. I'm like, no, it's a moment. You don't get it. And I think that's what differentiates you from many is that you are, you're not a singer. You're an artist. You, you, it's beyond just vocals. It's yeah. passion. It's feeling. And I want to tell you, Danielle, my husband, is obsessed with your your voice is like you don't understand i mean you do you do that's why you do what you do because you, you really ch you ch you could change a life i want to tell you in baltimore you you late tahar you guys gave me like you got me through like a very difficult time i was a brooklyn girl living in baltimore there was no pizza past 12 a.m can you imagine what is a girl to do and and your songs got got me through it. Wow! <laughs> I had no idea. That means a lot to me. Oh, oh my god! Wow, that really yeah. means a lot. No, I promise you. Like later, like you guys got me through high school because like it was very hard. You know, like you're balancing non-Jewish music and and you want like meaningful music, and your that will that was the music that was playing back then. Right? Like, yeah, what I mean, else was there? Yeah, I mean, there was, I mean, oh my God, how many long? There was, the, it was us. I remember when, sh, it was us starting out. Shalsheles, there was the Chevra, there was Shweki, started out right. at the same time as the us. Chevra. The Chevra. The Ellie Gerstner is doing a great job in production now. He's doing great. Um, and yeah, that was, you know, it was, it was three best friends, the three of us. We grew up together since we're five. And we loved music so much. Is that and we true? Sang, I didn't know that. Yes, best friends our whole life. And we're still best friends. Music keeps you together. No, we're that together. Means, we're together. together. Music or but not. we got to spend time with each other. Um, and, and because of music, we already were, were tight musically, but we the music brought was able to bring us together when, you know, people don't make time. It's hard to spend time with people, but we, you know, you have to do music. You come and it was, it was such a, uh, and you deliver. It was, yeah. It was and such like, a, your, your music just gets better and better with them. It's, it's unbelievable. But, but, oh, oh my gosh, Ellie, after this right now, I'm going to be in the doghouse and so will you right now. I'm going to have to screen record this after we got to give a big shout out. Mama loving Liba Schwebel. Ladies and gentlemen, I want some hearts because his mother is my inspiration. My, I'm sure she's yours also. She's literally a woman of, okay. I, I say it like Tell this. Tell us a little. little. My ma, okay. I say, Ma, you gave me the fire for life. And my, my, my mother has it from my grandfather, Papa Wasner. Everybody has a fire. My grandfather, Papa, was a, he was a lion for life. That's what he I was heard. A lion. He was a lion. He was a lion. He was, he was like Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and, <laughs> and some rab, some rub <laughs> together. And he was a rock star of a person, just a magnet. What a, what a huge, huge heart and, and power. He loved life. 
And I think uh, his sensitivities and my grandmother, Mama Wasner's musical sensibilities, extreme, my, my musical core is Mama Wasner, my mother's mother, oh, who was so, a- Wow, I didn't know- it was My that. mother's mother sang Carnegie Hall. She oh, was an right. opera. She, she was an opera singer. Videos about that. She showed, oh I, my gosh. Yes. And she, her, her musical, her understanding is so powerful. It's so, uh, it's she, untouchable. She, you can't, you can't express it in words. No, she, she, we would both go, ah, at the same chord progression. Something would happen. <laughs> we go, ah, oh, did you, you hear that? It. Oh, you got it. Like, oh, you know? Wow, that's amazing. Le loving Lee Bow. Okay, I'm off the hook. Phew. No, you don't say oh, I, I love my, my mother is wow. She's like a what a powerhouse. She's changing the world. Always she, you know why she's changing the world? Because she worked very hard on herself. That's why. She worked hard on herself. She I saw the amount of energy she put into developing herself as a as a person. She's not uh she's not stum. You know, she's not stum. She's not going out there to change people just because to change people. She's, she looks inward. A lot of these people go outward. She goes inward. She's, I'm very, wow. very proud of that about her. And I'm so, I'm so honored and lucky to be able to learn with her every other week. And I, I can honestly say I'm a better person because I'm able to learn from her and just be in her presence. Just to watch her, I'm like, I want to be like even a, a Yoda of you when I grow up a little bit. She's but, she's um, a, she's an amazing person, yeah. And she loves you very much. And there is not one son that goes by like, let me tell you about my son Ellie. I'm like, here we go again. <laughs> oh wait, before I forget, Ellie, I put a, a question box on my stories, and my my chillers, the people in my group who learn with me, they're like, don't worry, we got the screenshot covered. Thank you guys, I love you. Um, the number one question that I received from the followers, the Halo Good Brothers and Sisters is what's up with Ellie's hat? He looks so cool in it. Is, is it to be cool or, or the, the, the hat came before the coolness? Tell us about your hat. You know what it was? And I think that this is where everything in art, I, I, I think about this stuff a lot. You know, I really do. This question that you asked, I thought about <laughs> many, many times. Not only did I think about it, I, I wrestled with it. You know, because you, <laughs> because you I don't get such a deep question, but look at it's that. It's a folks. very deep question. Hold on, and I'll before, tell you why. Before we head into deep questions, let's do a little bracha, a very deep bracha. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Shakol Nevi Baruch. Amen. Amen. Hold on, it's what's up. My family it is like a hundred degrees in this basement. Um, Daniel, the, the, turn on the air conditioner. Woo! All right, go ahead. What are we okay. eating? What are we eating? Anything good? I was gonna have. I was gonna have a. I was gonna have. A, well, I shouldn't have it now because it's ice cream. But like, yeah, so it's eighty calories ice cream. Give all the. Oh come on! Even though people should know, you you lost a lot of weight, right? I did. I did. I did. And I. It's it's battle. Battle every day. Battle. Well, look at you. You're battling this eighty calorie bar thing. Why not? And I'm, I, I'm just like, give me the lahe, give me the pizza. I I applaud you. I wish I had the self. Determination mm. that you do. Mm. Mm. So, talk to us about that thing on your head. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll tell you, I, I was trying to, I think as an individual in a society, a person makes a choice every day when they wake up, they put something on, they go outside. They say, hello world, this is what I like. This is who I am. This is who I'm part of. This is what I represent. This is, when you put this on, you think you don't make a decision. You make, you have no choice. If you say, you can't not be part of something. You are automatically, the second you wear something, whether you wear, you're Amish. You walk outside in your Amish I clothes. Love it. You're Amish. You see this? You are, that's what you're saying. I. Clothing was, makes the man. Yeah. It's yeah. a done deal. I was trying to figure out where I belong, right? So I tried you know, this type of people, that type of people. I went to Israel, I learned, and I learned, to, I was, I have a Rebbe in Bat Ayin. I, I, I wrestled with Yiddishkeit for a long time. I was trying to figure all this stuff out. I want I realized, people to hear this, because you know what? 
I, we don't, I don't usually get this. Like, usually it's just the same, same, same. I love this because you, right now, what you're about to say, this is going to connect to so many people. And I'm so appreciative that, that you went through it is one thing, but that you're sharing it with us. You're sharing, like, you're taking experience and you're literally giving chizik to other people because so many of us go through experiences, but how many of us use our experience to change the world? Thank you. So I just want to preface that by just, I'm so grateful for you, for what you're about to say. Okay, go ahead. Um, yeah. I mean, when you wrestle with all these things, um, which I did for many years, and I still do, but not really, because I've created my own relationship with Rabboni Shalom that's built on grounding in my spiritual in my spiritual um my spiritual engagement with the world meaning um, i've come to a place where i went through hell i mean i went through hell i experienced joy and pain that were beyond and i tell you some of the greatest moments of my life were reflecting on the pain and it's just yeah. it's crazy because when i look back and i say wow i saw god over there i felt a little thing from the rabbi shalom like I can't touch God. I can't even think or fathom. But I can, there's a whisper that I felt reflecting after the hell. Anyway, the, the, the point of this is that I was trying to find my way and wiggle and go over here and go over there. Maybe this, maybe this, maybe that. And the clothing that you see is kind of a mishmash mashup of all of the little experiences of types of people that I've been Through, trying. Throughout your experiences. Uh, yeah, I kind of like just. It's, it's the Ellie Schwebel life and attire. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it, what you have to be your, to be your own person, to be who you are is not as, it's not as simple as you think it is. It's a, it's a real trying to figure out and, the only way you figure it out is if you like mess up like a hundred times. It's just, <laughs> like it's just the way it is. I feel good about my mess up. I don't feel yeah. so bad now. There's no way. You can't, nobody's nailing it the first time. I mean, my, I had my, uh, my podcast, my, my, my show is supposed to start tonight at seven o'clock. I had uh, 7.15. I'm sitting around. This whole thing got messed up. The, the thing, the this, the that. But, uh, it all got to 17. Baruch Hashem. Next time it's going to be better. My point is in the spiritual search the, all my clothing and the way that I dress is like this hat. This hat, I grew up wearing a blue, a blue bar mitzvah hat. Right? And I was a blue loved, eye. I had a blue trionfo. A blue trionfo. That's for Ben Taira. Yeah. <laughs> and I, as I as through my search I saw, you know, I love this hat. Then this my Rebbe. I had Leonard Cohen wore a hat. He's a big inspiration of mine. And I saw, you know what? You know, you don't see the president of the United States who wears a, when you got to get something done in life, you wear a suit, okay? You go to work, you wear a suit. I said, huh, that's an idea, a suit. No, I understand that. But also, I like to wear jeans. I think jeans are pretty cool. You know, it's like, like I like that. But, you know, on that artistic side, is trying to, Take what I think is grounding, like for example, right? Like these shoes. Like I have to wear these shoes. <laughs> I was like, where is he going? Ladies I have to get these. To show us his shoes. What is Jimmy, shoes. Jimmy Choo. <laughs> Jimmy Choo. I wear these on stage. Patent leather. Mishug. Well, you don't play around. That's like, that's a boss. All right. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Place, you hear me now? Yeah, now I hear you. The, the shoes, the shoes, you can't spiritual and the shoes don't get along. You don't like it, I, me, I love them, but you don't think it's spiritual. I'm joking because you couldn't hear me. I was like, it's trying to fight the battle. Yeah, but I, 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 I have to tell you, it's 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 all about for me, it's all about finding where you feel comfortable enough to grow consistently in a way that's not mashuga and not not working on yourself and to find that spot you need your own thing and for me i needed 
whatever I have right now, where I live, where what I'm, what I'm doing, it's my, my expression in the world. And everybody has their own. And I, I love that. And, and because you say that, I have no doubt in my mind that you're somebody, you look at people like your mother, you look at their soul. You don't, you look beyond past the shoes, past the hat. When you said you have a deep, like, answer for this hat, you weren't joking around. No, I'm telling you the truth. No, no. I don't, I don't think you realize, but after you, you, you showed the shoes, that's it. The comments are like, oh, my God, I love the shoes. Where did you get them? So hot. <laughs> <laughs> so hot. They, they, so hot. The shoes are hot. <laughs> <laughs> They're digging your style, Ellie. Okay, ho- wait. Speaking about deep answers, and you know what you were saying? Like, Jimmy, I can't just sing a song. I got to feel it. I got to be in a moment in my life where I could express what I'm going through that I could connect to others and give them chizak and I need to feel it. And you, my friend, have gone some crazy experience, you know, as soon as this Corona thing happened to uh, many people, just like, I, oh, the people in the news, it's numbers, it's numbers, it's pay, it's not us, you know, they, they can't really relate to it. And I want to tell you, I started this whole thing because I, I wanted to not just, go through this experience. This is our motto. We want to grow through it. And I want to bring people like you. You're not just singing. There's, there's a, a, per, a, a neshama. Look at you. You're, you're inspiring so many people. They're like, for sharing the hat story. We're never going to look at you the same again. Stand it. And yeah. I, I, we were talking about how people wanted to learn about happiness. And one of the greatest ways to achieve that is the number one thing Shalom Melch says is to be grateful. You have to start looking at the little things. And sometimes we have to go through traumatic experiences, but we don't, let's not wait till we have to go through that to appreciate the little things, the water, the glasses, the Gucci shoes, right? So that's why I, I, I want you to share that story because like your story, because when we go through that, we are, to see a whole different view on life and I don't want to be able to go through that on a personal level like I want to learn from other people's experiences okay okay um so yeah I'm, I'm, I'll share that story with you I mean I think that story I mean I think it's uh I think it's an epic I mean I was it was poor in time and I I caught it I went to go check I had the flu. Okay. Go home. I said, would you check for the corona? No, no, there's no possible chance you have the flu and corona. I said, okay, I went home. I went through a week of absolute hell. I have some, I, I went, I have a condition of a neuralgia that I had once in my life. It's called the suicide disease where it feels like it's a, a, an ice pick with electricity every 10 seconds in your brain. It's the worst oh my hell. God. And the corona came, did not, I didn't know this, but the corona came and reactivated it and no medication would stop the pain. No. I was screaming for two days. I didn't tell anyone, by the way, because I thought it was, uh, I didn't tell my parents. I mean, I, didn't t- I just, I didn't tell. I just, because I was like, what's the point? Sorry, of- Mama Liba. Anyway. But, um, yeah. Oh my gosh. That so I, I ended up in uh, Katsola came. My oxygen was in the 80s. They rushed me to the hospital. I ended up going to NYU. And it was Friday night. My oxygen was dropping and dropping. And they said, we don't know what to tell you. I mean, this is, uh, this is bad news, right? So like you really, this is, we don't know if there's 88% of people are not going to make it. I'm saying this is, I, I have friends that died. Like, I know. So I'm sitting there and it's Shabbos, Friday night. I can't call anyone, can't speak to anyone. I'm all alone. It's three in the morning, Friday night, oxygen dropping, and I prepared for death. That was it. I said, I made some beautiful music. I have a beautiful family, I have beautiful friends. And Rabbi uh, Shalom, it's my time, it's my time. It was, it was one of the, it was, I, I made peace. I made peace with my life. Right then, it was, it was, it was hell. But it was, I, I sat there and I went through the, I'm going to die. I went through it. Like, this is it. And the worst part of it was, 
I'm never going to see the people that I love ever again. That was the worst. That was, I was like, I'm never going to see them again. Because I can't say goodbye. I can't say goodbye. So. I can't even imagine that moment and the thoughts. I, I, I'm just trying to put myself in what you went through. Like, I, there, there are no words. I'm, I literally have the chills right now. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was absolute. It was absolute. And then something turned, something turned that Friday night. Um, and Lord Hashem, it, uh, it turned around and I was out a couple of days later. And the second I was still breathing heavy. The second I came home, I was working on this song with Gotti for two years, Gotti Fuchs. And Gotti wrote and. God, he wrote it, and I, he said, Ellie, this is for you, two years ago. You know, this is, because Leif to her stuff was all like the two of us together with Ari Tucker. And he said, this is, and I worked it, and I worked it, and I worked it until I got it. And I was sitting on it, and I just came out of me when I came home. This idea of, I'm so lucky to be alive. I'm so lucky to touch my piano, to sing. I was <gasps> and I was singing. And, yeah, I um, saw that video. I saw that video. Yeah, and that video went the viral. Lack of oxygen. Yes. It very went the, the fifty thousand sixty. I don't know. It went. It went crazy. And I said, "Wow, this really touched people." I said, "I went to the show." I said, "You know what? Let me. I got to do something. I got. I got to do something with this." I called my all my music community, and I said, "Guys, I want to do something." And they all jumped on 20 musicians. Lady Gaga's keyboardist was on there. He's a friend of oh, I thought all these. My husband, my husband's like, Jimmy, Pink's keyboardist. I'm like, are you sure it's Pink? No, it's, it's Gaga. It's Gaga. But it's not we the point. We got the wrong artist. But yeah, but it's, it's that. And I, just, I decided I'm not going to do it with Yidin only. I had my Rebbe on there, Rebbe Daniel Cohen. I don't want this. This is not a message for Yidin. It's a message That's for everyone. I want, and I, Christian America is, went nuts for this. I have letters from churches telling me what you, what you did is that we, our whole church is loving. Crazy. It's crazy. What's, what the, a kid is Hashem. What a kid yeah, is Yeah. And it was, uh, it's, it's a big schuss for me. It's a big schuss. It's not a schuss. It's an honor. It's like, it's like, uh, it's like, it's such a wonderful feeling, you know? You know, it's like a wonderful feeling to be able to give meaning to the pain, to give it some meaning. Because that's what we all long for. If we had meaning for it, for anything we went through, it's, there's something. When you don't know what your meaning is, so then what, it's, it's all for nothing. So what? I went through this for nothing. Really, that's the question you ask yourself. But I, yes. But, but what? Just because? Like the people that... I am lucky. I know I went through something and I went for a reason. Lucky. A person who goes through something and doesn't know just sitting there that for nothing and I'm alone. What? I'm lucky. I'm blessed. So I ended up doing that. And now I'm, I'm writing a new album uh, and I'm, you know, it's all from a different place. I have a song called The Broken People and I'm shifting that's the one I put. That's the one I put on my on my on my story today. It is so powerful, Ellie. When, when did you like? Because you, you said you wrote it from a very dark place, a very oh. hard. Oh place. yeah. When, wow. when was that? Years years ago, was, I wrote it. Years, years ago. ago. Oh. Years okay. ago. It wasn't from this from this Corona. Um, no, 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 no. It wasn't from this. No, this challenge. was. Yeah, it wasn't from this challenge. Was this challenge was was no music. And then, Noid And I think it's important to be able to express both. Point to express. Um, sorry about that. Sorry, um, I lost you. No problem. Um, yeah, I think it's important to express both. Um, to express the both of the yearning and the desire to. And, and the question, why? Why does this happen? Like, take it away. And thank you. Two opposite, two. How do you get along with those two ideas? How does that happen? How do you do that? I don't understand something. Greatest thing that, one of the most beautiful things I heard 
was from Rev Weisport from Baltimore at my cousin's uh, Sudas Hoda, Sudat Hoda, Sudat Hoda. <laughs> For you smarty people out there. For you, S Wise. By the way, Ellie, Ellie, a lot of people are asking if you're going to sing it. Oh, you, Ellie, you're going to, you got your whole set up. What, what, what do you, what do you, what do you want? What do you want me to sing? Which one? A broken people? No. Uh -huh. Whichever one you want. I, I love the No Delacha oh. is, is. Okay, let's sing the No Delacha. Let me see if I can put it together over here. Um, yeah, so basically, one of the most beautiful things I heard was this part, because I always ask this question. I said, I don't understand something. Why am I thanking God for taking me out of this situation when he's the one who put me there in the first place? That's such a great question that so many people ask. I would love like, to hear what he, what he answered. This is life altering. If anybody's listening to this question, Whoever is listening to this right now is extremely lucky because your life's about to change forever. Forever. It's going to be recorded. This is going to be recorded forever so we could come back to this when, when life. we are put in situations to remember this. Okay, Ali, Ali, say, just ask the, say the question one more time. This is very important. Okay. Very simple. Why do we thank God for taking us out? Sudat Hoda'a. Why do we thank God for taking us out? of a situation if he's the one who put us there in the first place. Thank you, Hashem, for taking me, for saving me. Thank you, Hashem, for saving me. That's what it really is, right? Thank you, Hashem. Oh, Suda Toda'a, thank you, Hashem. He saved me. Rabbi Shalom saved me. Did he? And my, by the way, Ellie, my, my neighbor across the street, she, she just had the... Um, bench Gomel. She's not coming home. She has a few hours. My neighbor across the street last night, she said it. I have to post a video crying. Thank you, Hashem, for another chance. Why thank you? Say no thank you. Say why? Why the first place, right? So the life that I, 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 I wrestled with this my entire life. And when I think it took me a long time to even hear this, to be able to hear these words and to, and to uh, accept them and to understand that it's true took a very long time for me. And I think, I think it's the Emmas. So, Who, which rabbi, which rabbi gave you the answer? Rabbi Weisbord. He's the mashkiach of the yeshiva in, in Baltimore. He's a good friend of my cousin. And uh, I told him, I said, you blew me away right now. You just blew me out of my head. I, 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 I don't even know what to tell you because I can't believe that. I can't believe it. Like, I can't believe it. He said, you don't say thank you for getting me out of the situation. You say thank you. That's it. It has nothing to do with the situation that you're saying thank you. What do you mean? Why are you saying it now then? What you, the sudato da'a is... I went through an experience. I was in hell and now I'm out. I have an appreciation personally, me, of being alive. The gratitude I have for being alive is so clear and present in me that you are lucky to, have up to, a, to engage with this gratitude, mine. The Rabbani Islam, I will never know his Khashmi. I cannot ask, and I will never know. You're gonna, I'm gonna tell him, thank you for this, don't thank you for that, and then this happens, and you say, I'm sorry. You don't know Cheshbonis, but you do know one thing, a clarity of gratitude. Thank you. So you don't say thank you for. You're saying, I have deep gratitude right now. Me, me, the person who got out of the situation, understands gratitude on a deeper. I am going to share that ah. with you. Here it is. I am not sitting there saying, I know the chashbainis of the chashbainis of the Rabbani Shalom. Because the question goes again. Tzadik varalei rasha v'tayvle. We say, a tzadik, it's terrible for him. A rasha, he ends up having a good life. So what do you mean? Why do you say sudat hoda'a? Why do you say, what do you mean? That means I'm a rasha. If I got something good, I'm a rasha. You understand? 
Meaning all these questions and the philosoph 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 philosophical questions, in the end, they don't add up unless you just go to the simple unless you go to simple, wake up, that's it. Nothing else. That's it. So and I, I was not able to hear these words. I don't know, till, till recently, till the past, you know, two years. I wasn't, I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear it. And really? Maybe, maybe people, yeah, because you have to be in a place where you've been challenged so much that your ego is down enough to be able to say, wait a second, I don't know what's going on. Hang on a second. Whoa, whoa. what? I, I, you have to, that's right. what it has to be. And me personally, it took me many years to, to be able to do that. And when I heard it, I, I, I said, listen, you just, you just changed my life right there. You changed my life right there. And, and you sharing his words changed. A I don't know if you're reading the comments, but it's insane. People are like, I'm seriously moved. This is so deep. I needed to hear this. One of the women here um, that is watching, her husband is a full-time doctor in Maimonides. And when this really started, like at the, in the beginning, she would message me. She's like, Shimmy. when I started the shimmy schmoozes, she's like, I just, I don't get it. Like he comes home just to sleep for three hours and then he comes back because the family members can't be with the patients. He's being the doctor, he's being the therapist, he's being, you know, the, the middleman. And she's writing on here like, thank you. Like this, she needed, because it's hard to go through challenges and to, to we, we just can't understand. We won't, we'll, we'll never understand. So much you, know, you, you know, and I want you to know something. It, it, it's very easy to say that. You know, in Yeshiva, they used to say that. You can't understand. You can't. That's a cop-out. Meaning, it's a cop-out to say we can't understand unless you say, I really can't understand. And I won't. And you accept it for yourself. You don't just we can't understand. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's, it's not just a, how do I say in words what I want to say? It's, it's, it's an experience more than an idea. You have to experience, like understanding, means the idea to, to understand is the deepest of connection to the idea, where you feel it. You don't you just feel it. know yes. it. You feel, feel it, yes. I don't understand. I don't understand in such a deep way that it blows by all of your questions. It's like, I am, I'm kaput. I have nothing. I am zero. I got zero on this. Once you, I think that's where, that's what it took for me to say, okay, Haida is necessary. I mean, that's, 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 that's what it was for me. Not only, not necessary even, but like, that's the only, that's the only way out. It has to be the only way. <laughs> it has to be the only way out of, of your, of your, of your, of your questions and of your health, whatever it is. Oh, 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 what's your other option? <laughs> yeah, right? but you're lucky. I say, they say that you're burning, you're burning some, you're lucky enough to be able to get there. One second. Sorry about that. You're lucky enough to be able to get there, they say. You know, it's like, I, I think it's a lucky, I'm blessed that I was able to get fashmated really hard and say, I'm lucky to be alive. To have that experience and to live with it and to, and to nurture it every day, that's, the, that's, that's what I'm lucky about. That's where I'm lucky, you know? Because I used to have bigger ideas and I needed to be this and I needed to be that and whatever it was. And I've been developing my own thing for many years. And, and this is like the icing on the cake where it's like, do your thing. <laughs> Be happy. You're lucky. Make music. Right? <laughs> I, I'm sure after you, you came home from that, how long were you in the hospital for? Four and a half days. Five, four days, four and a half days, something like that. Five days. When, I was when, quick. When you, you're quick. That's I mean, most people, they th someone I told me, saying, they thought, Ellie, Ellie, get ready for three to four weeks, five weeks in the hospital, get ready, you know? And I'm like, and I'm like, you know, it's like, I just. And Ellie, that video, that video on that first time that you got, you sat by the piano, you still had a hard time breathing, you weren't back to yourself. And w am I correct? You were wearing... A my talent and filling. Yeah, right? I haven't. I I've been struggling. I've been struggling for many years with filling. Filling was hell for me, because I saw it as a restrictive um, engagement with God 
and not an engagement of love. And uh, so that's how I felt about it. What do you want me to tell well, you? Why you know? did you feel that way? Because I was brought up with that. And, um, and uh, not I wasn't brought up. The yeshiva, the people in yeshiva, basically, the Rabbanim didn't teach us correctly. And they taught us uh, a very um, fire and brimstone way of seeing Yiddishkeit and God. And I think a lot of us yeshiva guys saw it that way and didn't have a great experience with it. And I've been trying to figure out how to deal with that. And, you know, I was on and off for many years. You know, I just said, I can't do this. I can't do it. You know, because I wanted something real. I wanted something good. But the Rabbanu said, you have to do it. I can't. Da -da -da -da. Purim night. I decided. Purim night. I decided. This, this year, Purim. Um, yeah. This is it right now. Right now, Purim. The day I got Corona, I sat down and I said, I am getting back into this heart. I'm ready to accept and to engage in this beautifully. This is what happened before Corona. Okay? I said, I'm oh, ready. Before, before Corona. Before, right before. All right before. Right before. I'm talking about the oh, day of. Yeah. I, I was saying, I'll tell you where I was. Like, you know, I, Hashem, because I got Corona, I want to get out of it, so I'm going to do this. It wasn't like that. No, it wasn't like that. It wasn't I like that. I didn't know that. Yes. And, um, and, uh, I, um, and I went home, Purim night, and basically I said, okay, wake up in the morning. Next morning I went, I put Tefillin, I went to Davin at um, this place called Eon, Rabbi Pinson, where I was hanging out with the Zusha Chevra, the guys, you know, all these, all, all of like the artists, the Jewish artists' minds, you know? So uh, yep. I hung out with them and I put the feeling on and I was like, okay, this, this feels, this is great. This is, feels right. I can, I can connect this way and it, it's beautiful. And I went to, that's when I got sick right then. Boom. Got sick. Hit the, hit it. And that's wow. when, I, when I came home, I was like, oh my God. Uh, it was even more. I was, I felt so lucky to do that again. And um, it was great. Obviously it's, it's, it's. It's just, it's just a crazy, uh, crazy, I, crazy story. I, I think it's, I think it's crazy that you, you took that upon yourself. You know what? Like this time, that's it. I'm rocking out these fill in. I want to connect to Hashem. And then right after Hashem was like, yeah, I'm going to give you Corona. Let me, let me see if you're really serious about this boy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that's what it, it's funny because that's not what it feels like to me. It's yes. Yeah, see, that's the same You're thing. Looking at it, it I look at it. I look at. I look aspect. at it. I look at it differently. Yeah. I, I don't. I you see because that's the that's the relationship of the question. Meaning, I have something a little bit where I don't engage in that idea. I engage in something a little bit, a little more, um, not a, a little less like I know what just happened. <laughs> I don't know. It just. I don't know what just happened. What I can tell you is, is that I can, will continue on this path, but I'm not going to make, I'm not going to have that, uh, that relationship of like, let's see if you could do you it. Can't. Come on. No, nah, that's not a right. good you, you that's, can't, that's, you can't wait. You, I, you won't, you won't survive like that. No, I don't engage with, because that's, that's what destroys people. When they think they know what God is, first of all, what God is, let's get the, what God is, you know, <laughs> you know what God is. No, nobody know. If you say you know what God is, never. You lost it. The second you think you know what it means, God. You know, Jordan Peterson said it best. He said, "Do you believe in God?" We say "Ani Mamen," right? "Ani Mamen." People think means I believe. No, it means I establish. I will act as if. Emuna does not mean to believe; it means to establish. Of affirmations. Ani mamin, why do you have to say it if you believe it? One second. I have to say Ani mamin? I already believe it. What do I have to say it for? The whole point of saying Ani mamin is you're training your brain to act in a way that you see God like this. Why do you have to say it? Because you're trying to establish it in your mind, 
right? So, so the idea of who dares say, I believe in God, that's what Jordan Peterson says. Yeah. So when you say, I know what God is, you have to, you have to be like, you have to be blown out of your head to say that in a real way when you know. Right. Say, I know what the Rabbanu Shalom is. So the whole thing with the Cheshbonus, with this is what he did, and this is why, and this is that, very, very dangerous game. Very dangerous game. If you really want to have a real relationship, meaning with, with something that you, can't under, that you can't grasp, to have a relationship with something you can't grasp, you can't grasp it. You have to know that it's the unknown, and you will not. That's the point that I've been trying to you bring also, out. Right, and also you're showing us how words are so powerful. Words are so powerful. Yeah, the and, difference. And, yeah, the difference and, between and, a Jew, yeah. the difference between a human being and an animal is we call them a daber, dibur. That's what it is. Yes, I love that. A lot of people are like, sing it, Ellie. Sing the song. Sing Forget it. about talk. They don't want to hear me speak. <laughs> Enough of this speeches, Schwabel. Ah. How big, how big is your place, Ali, that you're walking so much? Baruch Hashem, Rabbi Nishalom blessed me <laughs> with, with the spots that I absolutely love. Um, where, where is your spot? It's in, uh, in New York? Yeah, it's in it's uh, Prospect a, Heights. Prospect Heights. Oh, it's so cozy and like Yummy, it's healthy. yummy. Yeah, yeah, it's yummy. And you know... Uh, uh, um, Linen House, L.A. Linen that's that, that, you know got me that uh, Shelly Shelly Strix. Shelly got me that linen. It's amazing linen. Oh my god. Anyway, shout out to <laughs> Shelly. Oh, I love it. Shout out to Shelly. Yeah, but this is the spot. This is where you know this is where the magic happens. Um, you know, like I love what you made of it. Like it could have been. I'm sure when it, it was uh, furnished, it was it was like, it was a it was a ware it was a warehouse. We, it was yeah. nothing. But I spent a lot of time developing. I, I love building. I love like all the little things. I love that stuff, you know? Your sister Chavala, Chaviot is like, help. Help. She can't <laughs> handle this. Oh my God, Ellie. I love your By being the way, honest. She wants you know. to know who your favorite sibling is. My favorite sibling? Be yeah. careful, Ellie. Be yeah, careful. That's, that's, a great, that's a really great question. Amazing question. <laughs> <laughs> what did you. I, I, my fam, I'm very, very blessed. I must tell you, my parents are amazing people. My, my brothers and sisters have been there with me and I've been, we've been together through so much. And it's just you're, amazing. You're a tight fam. You're, you're very, a tight fam, Jim. Like, yes, you're so really, close. really loving, really loving people. Like real, real, real loving. Lots of love, big love, laughs, laughs, screaming. Like my father acting sits crazy, there. act silly, like stop being so yeah, serious. Yeah, absolutely. Type of family. Like, yeah, like amazing family. Very, very lucky. Really, yeah, it's like Ellie, uh, it's a, Ellie. I don't, I don't even want you to start singing now because I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, we have ten minutes to this live. So what I think what we're gonna do is, I, I, I want to discuss a few more things to like eight for eight minutes. And then I want to come back on so you're not shut off. Because that would be the worst thing in the world to cut you off in and no Dalacha. That that would not be cool. Oh, you have a one how does it work? It's a one hour thing? How does this work? No, I, and then it just like shuts off. Like it doesn't it, it, it's horrible. Oh, it's yeah. Same. These crazy people. So we <laughs> So wait, we have to come back. We're gonna come back on the live after this, okay? I feel bad because you just had a two hour live. So if I'm we, the, I'm I'm on fire, baby. Right now. <laughs> I am on fire. I'm not even joking. I'm on fire. Guys, I can... if, you're, if you're loving Ellie, I want you to show me hearts because I, I need to know that you're here with us. But like, listen, oh, all read. 150 are, are still 150 are still up and running now. So good for them. Yeah. Hold all on right. a second. Hey everyone. So. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're the hearts. Every, every, yeah, also with Instagram is there's a five minute delay. So if you ask a question. Or you say something funny, they'll all the funny like hearts and emojis will come five minutes later. So you can Why? be talking about because it's Instagram. So like you could be talking about the saddest story, and all of a sudden you're gonna hear you're gonna have funny smiley emojis, and you're like, "Why are you laughing at me?" I and, noticed and that. Like, I noticed that. <laughs> That's so strange. Why do they do that? 
I know. It's it, so weird. It's a delay. It's so annoying. Oh, but God. Ellie, um, I had a question for you, but like, I guess based on your introduction and what we spoke about till now, it makes a lot of sense. Many singers stick to like the, the type and the genre, like to their people and entertainers of their kind. Mm -hmm. But then like you go on Ellie Schwabel's page and you're singing with Shulam Lemmer and Benny Friedman. You have Hasidish, you have Chabad, you have um, Ishai Rebo, Israeli. Like that is so cool that you could be able to connect and perform and click with all these like ac across the board. Like, is that amazing? I, I found that very inspiring. Um, you know, I think it comes down to, it comes down to understanding that music is a universal language for real. It's not like when you speak, when you really speak music, when you really speak it and care about it and love it, it's, it, there's, there's only two types of music. There's good music and there's bad music. There's only two types. <laughs> you said it. You said it. That's it. It's the truth, though. It's really, 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 it's, um, it's how I feel. So for me, a person who's connected for real, I don't care where they're from. It happens to be that I can speak all these languages and I, I understand Yiddish and I, I, I love Hebrew and, and I'm, I'm Jewish and I love God and I love, you know, I love Yiddishkeit and I love all these things and the Heimishkeit and the words and the expressions. I love it. And I, I grew up um, in a really Hasidish background, not Hasidish, <laughs> Heimish background where my grandfather right. was a cousin. We, you know, so for me, I... I'm, I, you know, I'm the great grandson of the Biana Rav. I'm supposed to be the Biana Rav right now. I'm just saying, I'm supposed to. Be. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm a grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, so I'm Hasidish. You joking? No. One second. <laughs> yeah, tenth generation Baal Shem Tov. But there are a lot of people that are. But <laughs> you know, yeah, I was gonna say like I'm the granddaughter of the Baba Sali, and I was like, really? I'm like. No, but it could be. Hashtag right, exactly, Moroccan. exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, but my, I, I have an aunt, Lois, Lois Hager, who has spent the past 10 years of her life, and she can, she, can, she does the family trees where she can show you exactly how, through everyone, what families, and I, I can't tell you, she's got hard drives worth of the stuff. So, yeah, but. Really? Yeah, it's really cool. She's really amazing. Wow. Um, um, yeah. So hold on. So, but, but beyond all those singers, nothing and nobody and no performance comes even close to when you get up on that stage and you with your father and you sing Tati, I can't sing it, but when I asked my rabbi, by the way, I'm like, Could I, am I allowed to do shimmy schmoozes with, with men? Because a lot of people are asking for entertainers. And he's like, yes, shimmy. Two things. You cannot sing and you cannot dance. And I was like, no. So, but when you sing that, Tati. I, right. so, let me, so let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you a story that happened to me. You're gonna... Okay. I might, I might have to stop you because we have three minutes. Okay, go ahead. I get a message from this from this from this girl that says, um, "My father died. He was a very young. He died very young, and I have three little boys, little little brothers, and they, um, and they, and they're a big fan of yours. And it would mean a lot to them if you could please send us a chizik message, right?" So I sent them a message. I said, "I have no." Words for you, the most big father is to Corona. No words for you. I, I have nothing to say. I, I, I can't imagine what you're going through. But I said, the only thing I could do is, ta -te, ta -te. I sang it to them. Ta -te, ta -te. Okay. Get a message back. Smiles, ear to ears, you made our day, this and that. And we just want you to know, yesterday it was the Shloshim, Shloshim, and the song they listened to on the way to the cemetery. Ta -te, ta -te. 
god. No. Wow, I'm I'm telling you that that's it just like the world just stops. I if I could describe it, the world just stops. And when you when, and when you sing with your fuck people get it everywhere. But when you we will sing it together like I think there was one time maybe was it at the Haas concert? I don't know that like, the three generations sang together. Right? Right. Me. Well, it's funny because I have a brother who's 20 years younger than me. So it's me, my oh, brother, okay. and my father. And my brother, oh. Avrumi, you should know, is a complete rock star. I mean, really? oh my God. Yeah. He came home from Eric Estrell, and I saw him play in Eric Estrell, and I said, we did a show, I have to show you, we did a show over the, overlooking the old city, me and my father and my brother. But <laughs> Avrumi came home and he goes, I said, he goes, Daddy, I want to buy a guitar. So my father said, okay, you go to Guitar Center, you know, $150. How much does it cost a nice guitar? I said, no, no, Daddy, you don't, you don't understand. This kid understands. He because it's a guitar he's done. I said, no, he's, no. I said, no, 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 no. And I took him to the, by his hand to, to the guy. And I bought him a serious guitar. He said, I want to see you play this. And he is just unbelievable yeah, you're, like, you're gonna show them how great you yeah. are no yeah no no, no. My, my, my father was blown away he couldn't believe he's he saw him play he's unbelievable my brother of rumi is a rock star Wait, so where, where do we find of rumi is he like out there is he more no the he's stuff? he's a good no he's a he's he's like a yeshiva, yeshiva guy he's yeshiva yeah. buckler he doesn't want to go into these you know you could see how I'll, I'm, I'm trying. I'm going to put out some stuff together with them. Me, me and my father. So yeah, we got to get a Rummy. I, I, Rummy's know, um, unreal. He's not, he's, not, he's not coming on this show. But yeah, you, you've you've heard him in <laughs> you've heard you've heard him in uh, Comes It's in the Rain. He does with my father. You can hear him in Comes It's in the Rain. Donnie Gross. He did that um, with my father a couple of years. Um, yeah, amazing. Wow. Okay, so uh, we it's giving me a, a countdown. So this is what we're going to do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to go off. We're going to come back on. Um, we're going to give you like two minutes to get everyone back on. And we are going to have a live performance by the one and only Ali Schwabo. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> I'll see you in a minute. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>